Warning, all attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion of sales categories and related topics in Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into the questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you've missed a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our knowledge base, our help center at knowledge.designmanager.com, select the webinars menu, and go under recorded webinars. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our discussion of sales categories and related topics in Design Manager. My name is Brad, and I'll be hosting the demonstration today. If you have any questions during the webinar, feel free to enter them into our questions pane on your GoToWebinar panel. If the question is outside of the scope of today's discussion, please email them to support at designmanager.com. Lastly, if you missed a portion of the webinar or want to review any of our past discussions, go to our help center at knowledge.designmanager.com, select the webinars link, and go to recorded webinars, and you can view all of our past dis uh, discussions at your leisure. In this week's webinar, we'll be discussing several interrelated concepts that all ultimately contribute to how you can configure Design Manager to properly record your revenue and cost of goods sold for the various goods and services you purchase from your vendors and sell to your clients. Primarily, we'll be focusing on the concepts of component types, company default accounts, and sales categories. As all of these concepts are nearly identical in both Design Manager and Design Manager Professional, we'll be focusing on Design Manager for the majority of the discussion to reduce the distraction of switching between the platforms, though I will show how to access a few functions in the professional platform. If you have a question specific to the professional platform, don't hesitate to type it into the questions pane. Lastly, we're ultimately configuring how our financial statements, particularly the income statement, will be affected. Therefore, you should always consult your accounting professional and, if need be, design manager technical support before changing any of these settings if you're unsure of the consequences of making those changes. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's first discuss the concept of component types within Design Manager. Component types allow you to classify the goods and services you purchase from your vendors. Design Manager comes configured with six component types, and they are defined on the Company Advanced Options window General tab, which you access by going to File, Company Settings, and clicking the Advanced button, and then the General tab. And in the Professional platform, you do the exact same by going to File, Company Information and Settings, and clicking Advanced to the General tab. Let's hop back over to Design Manager. So on the left-hand side, we can see our six component types. And notice that both Merchandise and Time are locked or disabled. Well, those are two types that cannot be defined. The other four types, Freight, Creating, Installation, and Labor, Design Fee, can be fully customizable. So why would you opt to change a component type? Well, any genre of good or service that you want to track separately can be its own component type. However, for purchases that have a different tax structure, each of those should definitely be a separate component type. And what do I mean by that? Well, is the particular good or service taxable or not? Or are they at a differing rate? For example, in New York City, merchandise is at one tax rate while design services are at an entirely separate rate. And if we look at our sales tax codes, for example, let's look at Pennsylvania, we can see I've configured this, that merchandise, freight, creating installation are all taxable, and they're all taxable at 6%. But while professional services, such as design fee or uh, design time, are not taxable, and I have them set for 0% as well. So having those component types allow us to easily classify that good or service so that we are taxing our clients appropriately. Another example, delivery and freight 
are considered different services in many areas throughout the country, and both of those are separate to different rates. So rather than having, let's say, freight and design fee, you may have one component type for freight and another for delivery. We go over the entire uh, concept of creating our sales tax codes in a webinar titled Setting Up Sales Tax Codes. So if some of these terms are unfamiliar to you, be sure to watch that uh, webinar as well to uh, learn some more of those advanced sales tax code techniques. Okay, what are some other reasons that we might want to have separate or change our component types? Well, I might not want to use creating. That might not be something I want to track throughout my accounting processes. So I could change creating to, um, let's say I want to separate installation and labor. I could have one component type for installation. And notice how as soon as I exit the field, the titles of uh, the uh, labels themselves change. So rather than having creating now, I'm having installation and labor. Or I might just not want to use the term freight. I might like shipping as a personal preference. So Design Manager gives you the freedom to take four of those component types and really mirror them uh, to the uh, type of business model that you employ. Further, many settings in Design Manager can be customized by component type so that you can price them differently, have them displayed on documents such as the invoice and proposal separately, etc. For example, we have our pricing type and the associated percentage. So I can, ta I can mark up merchandise at 30% or marking up shipping at 10%. And I can also optionally tell Design Manager whether or not to include that particular good and service in our uh, deposit to our clients. If you look at the proposal setting, I could change my freight to shipping here as well. And in this case, all of my shipping will be summated at the bottom of the document using the total style, while our labor will be listed under each of the individual items that have labor associated with them. So the component types are really an invaluable tool. And we'll back out some of those changes. Component types can also be used to filter reports or other windows in Design Manager, so you can focus on a particular type of good or service that you're purchasing. Under reports, for example, we can look at our component analysis or freight analysis, and as of many of you who are familiar with our webinars know, I always employ our favorite reports so I can access my reports quickly. Let's take a look at our freight analysis and we want to focus solely on installation and labor. We click OK. Now Design Manager is going out and providing me uh, all of my costs and prices for all of the component types set to installation and labor throughout software. Other windows work the same way. Let's go to our project and specifications and we'll go to our specification search window. And one of the primary parameters that we can use in our specification search is indeed our component type. So again, I may want to focus solely on all of my installation and labor, and I can quickly find all of the components that satisfy that component type. So the component type can be used to classify components for taxing and pricing, analysis, easy identification, etc. But most important to our discussion, however, is that the component type is the first determination of what revenue and cost of goods sold accounts are to be utilized. Let's see how. That's going to lead us back to our company information window. Notice our second and third tabs are sales accounts and cost of goods sold accounts. Notice for each of our component types, we have an associated sales or revenue account. So what we use these for are, these are the accounts that are going to be used for each of the particular co component types when we don't override the accounts further down the design process, as we'll discuss shortly. And each component type has a separate and related account in our example. So time has professional services and time, design fee has design fee, installation labor has installation and labor, et cetera. But that might not necessarily be the case. For example, my accounting professional may want 
my design fee and uh, time to go into the professional services time account. So I could set them both to the same account. It's all how my accounting professional wants that to be um, configured for many of the reasons that we discussed already. And just like our sales and revenue accounts, we're going to have a matching pair of cost of goods sold or COGS accounts also going into our five, uh, 50,000 accounts. And you can see the names and numbering system mirrors the revenue ones precisely. So again, these are going to be our default accounts that are going to be used when we ultimately invoice our client in the case of revenue and uh, receive our vendor invoices from our uh, vendors on the cost of goods side account. That brings us to that concept I just mentioned of overriding these accounts. And that's going to be done through a very, very important concept in Design Manager known as sales categories. Sales categories allow us to classify the goods and services that we're selling to our clients and can be used to answer questions such as, how much profit did I make on furniture this year? Or what was my total cost on artwork for the Smith project? A design manager comes pre-configured with a set of sales categories, but you can fully customize them to mirror your particular business model. In design manager, you're going to access your sales categories off your glossary listing, sales categories. And again, here comes here is our pre-configured set of sales categories that we find to be a pretty um, well-rounded example of all the goods and services that a design firm would sell. And in professional, you would access those under accounting, sales categories, all the way under the list and glossaries frame. And there they are. And again, you can see they match the design manager listing exactly. Many reports just like our component types, also use sales categories as a grouping or filtering option. Let's see if we look at our very common and uh, widely utilized profit analysis. I can put in a sales category of furniture, and I can even sort and subtotal by sales category as well. So now for each of our projects in Design Manager, Carter's Pennington Home, for example, I'm showing only our furniture sales category, and I'm subtotaling by that amount as well. So we can see all of our costs, prices, and profit on all of the uh, furniture items within each of our projects. Besides those uses, however, sales categories can be used to override the company sales and cost of goods sold accounts for each individual item. Let's look at our artwork sales category, for example. Here we can see that our artwork sales category also has an array of sales or revenue and cost of goods sold accounts associated with it. And each one can be configured to use a specific revenue or sales account and cost of goods sold account. For example, we're going to send all of our revenue into the 41300 art a revenue account and all of our cost of goods sold will go into the 51300 art account. But for our freight, creating, installation, etc., we're going to use the company default. This is very handy in that if I ever wanted to change my company, um, say all of my sales categories will put freight into the same freight account. Art uses that, so does. Craftsmen and artisans, labor, etc. So if I wanted to change each of these individually, if I wanted to change my freight account, I'd have to edit each one. But by using the company default option, all I'd have to do is change the account on the sales and cost of goods sold account in the company, and it would automatically be reflected in each of my component types set to using that a company default account. Now, different sales categories can also relate to the same revenue and cost of goods sold accounts. For example, I might have sales categories for couches, chairs, uh, dining room tables, etc., that all use the furniture revenue and cost of goods sold account. And this keeps my income statement nice and concise, but still provides me an avenue to track all the different type of furniture that I'm providing and the profitability, cost, and pricing of those various types of furniture. So ultimately, how do all these concepts relate? Let's take a look at our current income statement. Go 
back to our reports. So our monthly income statement. Okay, so for our month of July, we can see that we have no sales or revenue, nor do we have any cost of goods sold, though we do have some year-to-date values. So we'll use this as our reference point. Everything is blank in both the sales and cost of goods sold sections of the income statement. Let's go to our documents and accounting. Let's start filling in some of that information. First, let's take a look at our Carter's Pennington home as I've created two sets of artwork. Artwork for guest bedroom one and artwork for guest bedroom two. For guest bedroom one, Notice I have no sales category associated. So in this case, since my component type is set to merchandise, I'm going to be using the company default. For art and guest bedroom two, I'm using the sales category for artwork and my component type is merchandise. So now if we go and create an invoice for both of our artworks, Guest bedroom one, guest bedroom two. Remember, it's the act of making our client invoice that ultimately generates our sales or revenue. Here we go, there's our nice invoice. We'll accept quickly just to keep ourselves on track. And now, by creating an invoice, I'm assuming I'm going to have some revenue uh, on my income statement. And let's see what happened to our revenue accounts. Well, we've got $780 in our art um, revenue account, and we have $1,300 in our furniture account. Why so? Well, back on our project and specifications, since guest bedroom one is being sold at a price of $1,300 with no sales category, that's going to end up in our merchandise furniture accounts. We're putting our $1,300 of sales into uh, our furniture uh, revenue account. While guest bedroom two is using our artwork sales category, we're then redirecting our revenue in that case into the 41300 art account. So we're going to see our 780 in that account, which is precisely what we see on our income statement. The exact analogous situation will occur on our cost of goods sold side. So we still see we have no cost of goods sold yet uh, accrued in the income statement. So let's go ahead and make some vendor invoices. This is the act of making our vendor invoice, which ultimately will get our uh, cost of goods sold accrued. So if we go down to our purchase order, for our artwork, record our vendor invoice. Invoice for artwork. Today's date is just fine. Notice we have $100 of cost on our art for guest bedroom one and 600 on guest bedroom two. We go ahead and create our vendor invoice. Since we've already invoiced the client, we're going to skip or bypass work in process, meaning it's going to go directly into cost of goods sold. And if we take a final look at our income statement, we can see we have our $600 of cost of goods sold in our art COGS account, and we have 1,000 in the furniture. Again, guest bedroom one artwork had no sales category, so it was using the company default uh, of furniture COGS accounts for merchandise component types, while our guest bedroom two had the artwork sales category, which bypasses the uh, company COG settings and puts all that cost into the artwork cost of goods sold account. Now, we frequently receive questions as to why various revenue or COGS accounts don't have the expected activity. And it's very commonly due to the associated sales category or the absence of sales categories on the item. So one of the 
most important uh, reports to review, primarily when you're beginning usage of Design Manager, is your Sales Category Glossary. Under our Sales Category Glossary listings, because this will allow us to easily review all of our sales categories and their associated accounts. Uh, I can tell from uh, working with the technical support team at the end of uh, the fiscal year as we're getting ready for tax time, we see many people who have uh, erroneous information in various cost of goods sold or uh, revenue accounts. And the first thing we do as technicians is review where each of these uh, sales categories are pointing or directing their revenue and COGS. And we've seen all sorts of uh, unusual information listed on our sales category listing. For example, uh, artwork might be going to furniture or um, craftsmen and artisans have uh, merchandise revenue and cost of goods sold set to the same account. So printing out this report and reviewing it and ensuring that it complies with both uh, your uh, desired business model and your accounting professionals is very critical, primarily upon uh, starting up Design Manager, as I said. Once the sales categories are configured properly, don't need to touch them again unless you're going to make some uh, you know, uh, relevant financial changes. Another option you can do to control or um, uh, lock down how various revenue and COGS are going to be hit is by using a setting under our company information, advanced, general, called require sales category. This option forces all design manager users to enter a sales category on the item window and even in the professional platform on the, um, on the catalog or um, inventory windows as well. That way we're going to ideally never be using the company defaults as the user has to put in a sales category. And as long as internally all uses of design manager are trained as to what constitutes a various sales category, in other words, what goes into furniture, what goes into artwork, what goes into flooring, etc., and it's done consistently throughout the company, you can be assured that all of your financials will have accurate and relevant information on the income statement. And with that, we're going to conclude our discussion on sales categories and component types uh, and our income statement today. And we discussed all of these concepts pertaining to how they, we want to purchase and resell the goods and services and how to have them reflected on our financials. The component type, again, is used to classify the purchase from the vendor, while the sales category further classifies the sale to the client. The combination of all of this with our company default settings of the COGS and revenue accounts, along with our require sales category option, really determines how we affect our revenue and COGS accounts, and ultimately how all of that becomes relevant information on our income statement. And with that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us on our demonstration and discussion today, and I hope that you join us again on another webinar in the near future.